You hear it with every breath. You hear it with every word. Man, I have a sore throat. You hear it when he tries to make a point. I uh, got me a, a specialist in respiratory. Gary Stubblefield's encounter with oil 20 years ago literally took his breath away. <clears throat> this former Green Beret and Alaska outdoorsman got a job cleaning up the Exxon Valdez spill. He worked on a barge that sprayed hot water onto the oily shores. He was given no protective gear. Early on, he got sick. I went to their first aid station that they have where you, your rooms are. And uh, what I was told, it was like a flu bug. So they would give you antibiotics and tell you you're fine. But his breathing only got worse. <sighs> and his one sharp mind began to fail. I couldn't think and follow things because the doctor said it was the oxygen I wasn't getting to my head. Doctors concluded Stubblefield suffered severe and permanent injury involving both his brain and his respiratory system. My brother will die younger now because of this lifetime with the breathing and the toxic poison. Following the spill, Exxon funded over 350 environmental studies. The number of human studies, zero. Thousands of cleanup workers complained about breathing problems they called the Valdez crud. But there was no organized monitoring. Hey, let's not really Stubblefield battled Exxon for years before reaching a settlement, says his lawyer. It was just a, a sort of a black hole. The medical records were withheld. The industrial hygiene records were withheld. No federal or state health authorities were looking at either one of those things. And the workers were essentially abandoned to their fate. The health effects of oil spills have been largely ignored. There have been more than 400 tanker spills since 1960, but just seven have been studied for their impact on people. One of the important things about the Gulf oil incident that's occurring now is that we want to make sure that we structure a longer term study so that we can fill that gap. The most extensive follow-up was after this 2002 accident, which dumped 70,000 tons of fuel oil off the coast of Spain. Studies of cleanup workers found respiratory problems that persisted one to two years after exposure. Also, hormonal changes and psychological trauma. And there was damage to DNA, which can increase cancer risk. You work around this oil, you're gonna have health problems. The U.S. government has promised to track the health of the Gulf workers for years to come. Katie? And John, Gary Stubblefield was inhaling this toxic, oily mist so that was a worst case scenario. But what about these workers in the Gulf? Are they been, being given any kind of protective gear? They are, Katie. And a government official explained to me, it depends on what they're exposed to. If, for example, they're out on the water and they're exposed to toxic fumes because they're, say, burning off oil, then they're going to get a respirator. But if they're somewhere else in an area where the Environmental Protection Agency has found that the air is safe, then they're saying, you know what, if you have a heavy respirator, it actually might do more harm than good, especially in all this heat. So in that case, if they're exposed to the oil, say, right on their skin, they're going to have some kind of personal protective gear to protect their skin. Right, it's pretty scary stuff for those workers. All right, John LaPoo, thanks so much, John.